and dissection of the pectoral region, we have to look for the superficial landmark. The important ones are the clavicle. It is at the junction of the uh, the neck and the thorax. Okay, and uh, just above that, there is two, three supraclavicular nerve emerges out. So this is important landmark. Another one is the sternal angle. That is the junction of the manubrium sterni and the body of the sternum. Because this indicates a many much structure that first the attachment of the second costal cartilage, lower border of the T4 vertebra, the commencement and the termination of the arch of aorta, the uh, azygous vein opens into the superior vena cava, uh, junction of the superior and the inferior medial sternum, uh, thoracic duct crosses from right to left, and many more such. And this is the epigastric fossa, which indicates the junction of the body of the sternum and the gyphoid process. And it is at the line of the seventh costal cartilage. Another landmark is the nipple, which lies in the fourth intercostal space. And uh, there is mid clavicular line and the tip of the ninth costal cartilage. It is the junction, uh, here is the superficial landmark for the fundus of gallbladder. Okay, so these are the, and the one is the intraclavicular fossa. This is the site where the, uh, uh, the cephalic vein is approached to it. Okay, so uh, then we have to give incision. After the superficial landmark, we will give incision first from the jugular notch and up to the, uh, the GP sternum, up to the GP sternum, the one vertical line and there are two. Uh, the two horizontal. nearby the horizontal line that along the clavicle and along the rib along the rib we will give incision and one oblique incision from the GPS sternum up to the nipple and by sparing the nipple we will go up to the junction of and up to the junction of the upper one third and the lower two third of the arm in the anterior axillary fold, okay, like this, and this, the horizontal incision, it will go up to the posterior axillary fold, and now the skin is reflected laterally, this is, here is the superficial fossa, skin with the superficial fossa, and this is one of the deep fossa, this is also in the superficial fossa, but here it is attached, and this is the deep fossa, that is the pectoral fossa, which lies over the pectoralis major muscle and this is the site for the breast augmentation process, uh, procedure that is the breast implant is done at this space okay also known as retro memory space now this is the first muscle pectoralis major muscle it has got two head clavicular head and a sternocostal head clavicular head it arises from the medial two third anterior surface of the clavicle and the sternocostal head, it arises from the right side from the right half, left side from the left half of the second to sixth costal uh, uh, cartilage level. And also the medial half of the costal cartilage from second to sixth. It takes its origin as well as the external abdominis epineurosis. Okay? From this area, they are taking origin and get inserted into a small area by two lamina. The clavicular head forms the anterior lamina and the sternocostal head after twisting going and forming the posterior lamina. Very important, U-shaped and the inferior fiber are attached. So U-shaped fashion, anterior lamina is formed by the clavicular head and the posterior lamina is formed by the sternocostal head. Okay? And the sternocostal, again, upside down. It is the fiber superior fiber goes inferiorly and inferior fiber goes superiorly and form the anterior fold of axilla. Okay? And this is supplied by the lateral pectoral nerve and the medial pectoral nerve. From inside. Here lies the this is medial aspect, so here lies the medial pectoral nerve. On the medial aspect, there is medial pectoral nerve. 
Yeah, this one. After piercing the pectoralis, minor it is coming to the pectoralis major. So here is the medial pectoral nerve. This is medial pectoral nerve, and lateral pectoral nerve is coming from the delta pectoral triangle. Del this is delta pectoral triangle. From here, the lateral pectoral nerve is coming out. Due to its position, as it lies on the medial, and this is on the lateral. That's why the medial pectoral nerve and the lateral pectoral nerve. Medial pectoral nerve is the branch of medial cord of brachial plexus, whereas the lateral uh, pectoral nerve is the branch of lateral cord of brachial plexus. Okay? And clavicular head, its action is to flex the arm, whereas the sternocostal head, its action is the medial rotation and adduction of the arm. Okay? Now coming to pectoralis minor muscle. This is our pectoralis minor muscle. It takes its origin from the third. This is the second, third, fourth, and fifth. Third, fourth, and fifth, just behind the costochondral junction. And it is going to insert over the medial border of the coracoid process. Pectoralis minor. Here, at this region, it bridges the. Here it is attached, and here it is attached, but here it is forming a bridge which divides the axillary vessels. These are axillary vessels, axillary artery and vein. The uh, a part of axillary artery and vein which lies medial and proximal is the first part. Just behind is the second part. And laterally and distal is the third part of axillary artery. Okay? And it is also known as key muscle. And it is supplied by the key muscle. K-E-Y key muscle and it is supplied by the medial pectoral nerve alone. But in somewhere in the book it is written that both medial and lateral supplies. And its action is to uh, forward rotation of the scapula. And is, it also has a serratus anterior muscle. Okay? Pectoralis minor. Now coming to sub, subclavius muscle. Here is the first costochondral junction. And this muscle, this muscle, which lies over the subclavian vein here, on the, this is the clavicle, and this is medial one third of the clavicle, just below, on the inferior surface. Here is the subclavius muscle, very small. From here to here, first costochondral junction, up to the inferior surface of the middle one third of the clavicle. This is subclavius muscle. And it is supplied by the subclavian nerve to subclavius. And uh, its clinical significance is that it protects the subclavian vein when there is fracture of clavicular. Okay? And uh, a very important clinical significance that it contains accessory phrenic nerve in 30% of the population, human population. Uh, besides phrenic nerve, there is accessory phrenic nerve. And it arises from nerve to subclavius. Very important. And, and these are the serratus anterior. There are eight digitation from first to eight upper eight ribs. Just behind this is the anterior, uh, here is the costal cartilage. This is the anterior angle, just behind the anterior angle. There is the anterior angle of the rib, here is the anterior angle, just behind the anterior. These are the serratus anterior muscle. Okay, and it has got eight digitation, finger-like process. That's why digit, eight digitation. The first two digitation going to the superior angle of the scapula on the medial medial side, ventral aspect, and the third and fourth digitation going to medial border on the ventral aspect, and lower fourth digitation going to inferior angle of the scapula but on the ventral aspect. Okay, and it is supplied by the long thoracic nerve or nerve of bell and the compromise will lead to any injury will lead to winging of a scapula when a person tries to push the wall the medial border of the scapula become very prominent and look like wing that's why it is known as winging of a scapula okay so these are the muscles of the pectoral region and very important feature that this is the this is deltoid muscle here you can see this is the deltoid muscle this is the anterior fiber of the deltoid muscle we can see 
and this is the anterior border of the deltoid muscle and this is the posterior border of the pectoralis major muscle you can see there is a groove in which cephalic vein runs cephalic vein it arises from the dorsal venous arch over the dorsal aspect of the hand then it comes ventrally c for cephalic and c for c as double e that it wants to show its face from the very early very early period so it comes on the ventral aspect very early then the basilic vein cephalic vein it comes and then it runs in the delto pectoral groove in between the deltoid and the pectoralis major and at last there is a triangle this is triangle which is formed by the deltoid pectoralis major and the clavicle and it is covered by the costocoracoid membrane and clavipectoral fossa the upper part of the clavipectoral fossa is the costocoracoid membrane and here from the call structure is coming out that is the cephalic vein which we are seeing this is the this compressible structure this is here is the acromiothoracic artery this one and this is the uh, cephalic vein this is the cephalic vein which is compressible and this is elastic one this is the thoracoacromial artery and here also the lateral pectoral nerve and the lymphatics are there in this triangle and it is of very clinical significance because we reach for the uh, the cephalic vein for uh, implantation of the pacemaker uh, by the percutaneous angioplasty so this is all about the pectoral region and the pectoralis minor this is is covered by the but here is the clavipectoral fossa is not visible okay and yahan pe yeah this one this is this forms the this you can see the pectoralis minor muscle it is covered anteriorly and the posteriorly by the clavipectoral fossa and here is the suspensory ligament of axilla this is yeah suspensory ligament of axilla which is responsible for making the dome of the floor of axilla theek hai so this is about the pectoral region thank you